So welcome everyone tonight and thank you so very much for joining this evening and for giving us the opportunity to share with you all of the critical work that we do at Urban Peak in our community. Thank you to all of the wonderful women of Cocktails for a Cause, all of you who have swept us in the door and taken care of us this evening, who have put together this event, who have um, collected the kind of supplies that our youth need every day living on the streets. You are amazing and I'm just so honored to be included in your family tonight. Lastly, a huge thank you to all of our Urban Peak staff. Many of you have gotten to meet them tonight, um, and if you haven't had the opportunity yet, please take advantage of doing that. They are amongst the room, and they have their Urban Peak logo t-shirts on, um, and you will learn a lot, not just about youth who are experiencing homelessness, but about people who have a heart that is undeniable. These individuals are some of the most amazing people I've had the privilege of knowing and working with. They bring their hearts and souls to the work that they do every day, and every day I am amazed and humbled to work beside them. They are truly the key that makes a difference in the youth that we serve. Right. So I came to Urban Peak about uh, just a little over a year ago, and I knew at that time that working here would change my life and it continues to do so every, every single day. Every day is a game changer, and I'm so privileged to live that way. The programs and services that Urban Peak provide to youth and young adults living on the streets in despair, without a safe place to turn, truly changes lives. But often, it's our lives that are changed the most. So I wanna share a, a little story with you, and um, I have a picture. Um, to put up. So not so long ago I was preparing for a presentation and um, as sort of is my MO I was waiting for the last minute to put together my thoughts for that and I was heading out to the car after work thinking oh I should really get this together because I'm speaking tomorrow morning um, and I was thinking about how, how do we get across to people outside of our community, our staff, the sensitivity, the fragileness, the, the desperate need that the youth who are experiencing homelessness have. And at that very moment, this bird went zipping by my shoulder. And, and I'm outside in the downtown. Our offices are at 21st and Stout Street, and there's this big construction going on. That's what the fence that he's sitting on there. Um, and it just zips by my head. I'm like, what was that? Um, and I look over, and he's sitting on the fence like that. And I'm thinking, wow, that is... Amazing, what, what is this bird doing here? Clearly he's out of his element. Clearly he should be at home where he's safe and protected, where he's fed and cared for. But he's out here and that's dangerous and there's no way he's gonna make it out here on his own. And so I, of course, tried to catch the bird. I'm not quite sure what I would have done if I had, cut, like, now what do I do with you? Um, and I would get close and he would move away, but then, Every, he would do a circle around, but every time he'd come a little bit closer to where he was literally sitting on the rack of my car. Um, but then he took his final flight away and he was gone and I was sort of feeling in despair that I wasn't able to help that bird and I knew that um, he needed it. Look, look, um, flip to the other slide. This is another funny moment is that he, one of the times when he was circling around, he went up and he was hanging out with the little brown birds trying to fit in with the brown birds. <laughs> and it, I'm like, that's really funny. But again, it's really symbolic of the youth that we serve at Urban Peak, trying to find where they fit in to a society out on the streets where they don't fit in. Um, so the message was that Urban Peak exists because youth we serve are like this bird. They are out in the world in places they were never meant to be, and dealing with trauma, abuse, neglect, and situations most of us couldn't even imagine, just to survive. So I, I shared this story the last time I was speaking, and afterwards I got an email from someone who had been in the room, and um, it gave me goosebumps when I read it, so I wanna share that part with you as well. So she emailed and said, I had a similar experience. Last winter, there was a parakeet that had gotten loose, and 
I was on my way home from work and trying to catch it and save it because I knew in that terrible weather that it would never survive the night. And by the time I looked around, there was probably 10 or 12 of us leaving work. And we are all put our bags down and are rushing around trying to save this little parakeet. And I thought as you were sharing your story about that bird, I thought to myself, if that had been a youth who was experiencing homelessness, that had been a youth who had been trying to find a safe place on the street in a doorway of a building, would any one single one of those 12 people have stopped and said, how can I help you tonight? That touched me deeply. So Urban Peak is here to give a voice to these voiceless, to provide safety to the fearful and hope for the hopeless. One of the things I love most about Urban Peak and that drew me into the organization is how the staff, through this convergence of programs and services, are able to wrap around each individual youth and fill the gaps and meet the needs that no adult in their life has ever provided to them before. Every youth has access to a case manager who walks with them hand in hand on their journeys every step of the way because a meal is not enough. A safe place to sleep is not enough. Even a job alone is not enough if you don't have one single person that you know is on your side. Founded 25 years ago, Urban Peak is the only nonprofit that provides this full convergence of programs for youth ages 15 through 24 who are experiencing homelessness or are at imminent risk of becoming homeless. Urban Peak's goal is to meet youth where they are and to provide them with the assistance and support they need to become self-sufficient or to obtain the necessary services they need to simply maintain a safe existence. So let me tell you a little bit about the various programs. I keep talking about this convergence, and so I'm just going to highlight some of what we do because there's just so much. We have a drop-in center downtown where youth can get off the streets, get out of the elements, have a meal, take a shower, do their laundry, and just have a safe place to be for a while. We provide street outreach counselors that go out on the street where the youth are living. They dis distribute hygiene materials, clothing, food, um, and just work with the youth in need to build a sense of trust and relationship in hopes that those youth will take that next step and walk in one of our doors. We have an emergency shelter that sleeps 40 young people and up to 50 young people in inclement weather. We've already gone into our overflow 50 mode, and we've been sleeping almost that maximum every night since the beginning of October. We provide access to medical care, mental health, and substance abuse treatment programs. We provide education programs that help youth study for and complete their GED to get support if they want to stay in high school or to help them in accessing higher education and tra trade schools. We provide job readiness training, job placement, and we support them through that process and help them build the life skills that they need to maintain a job because they've never had a role model. They don't know what it looks like to be to work on time and why that's important. We own or place youth in over 120 supportive housing units throughout the city. And as I mentioned above, a critical component is providing the individual case management support throughout their journey. And the list goes on, because we really do what it takes to fill those gaps and to meet every youth in whatever door they come in, in whatever way they need to take that next step towards success. So here's the reality check. And I will be the first one to admit that 18 months ago, I had no idea the scope of the crisis we have in our community around youth experiencing homelessness. Last year, Urban Peak served 2,550 unduplicated youth. In America, in a year, 1.6 million young people are homeless. Based on the point in time study here in Denver, 921 of those live in Denver every night and several more, several hundred more in Colorado Springs. Recently, we've been noticing that just on the sidewalks on, our, on either side of our buildings, we've been having 20 or 30 youth stacked up along the walls of our buildings sleeping because they have no other place to go. We're pleased that they feel that Urban, Pe Urban Peak is a safe place to come, but it's heartbreaking to leave work at night and say goodnight to them as they're getting out their sleeping bags and their cardboard and trying to insulate themselves from the cold. I want to take every one of them home with me because 
it's so hard to walk away and know that we don't have a solution for them. There are two visions that I have um, in leading Urban Peak. One is, of course, as the CEO, to ensure that the organization has all of the resources necessary to serve every youth in Denver and Colorado Springs who needs our help. Um, we are a growing organization and the need continues to grow. So an event like this is fantastic and we appreciate your support in every way. The other goal that I have is to change the face and the image of what our community thinks of when they see a youth on the streets. To open the hearts of our great city to see the reality and the sadness behind their story. So who are the youth of Urban Peak? And how is it possible for this many young people to become homeless in our community? Because these are young people like my kids and your kids and your neighbor's kids and your grandkids and nieces and nephews. They are the same face covered in layers of clothing because they keep everything that they own on their backs, piercings, tattoos, whatever their shelter is that makes them feel safe. Many of these young people grew up alone, watching their parents succumb to a life of drugs, abuse, and crime, and many of them have followed in those footsteps. Some did everything they could to escape because it's simply safer to live on the streets behind a dumpster in an alley than to stay in their homes. 25% of the youth we support at Urban Peak were kicked out of their homes when they revealed their preferred sexual identity or orientation, and over 40% of kids in the United States become homeless for that same reason. Over a third of the kids we serve aged out of foster care and had nowhere to go. Can you imagine coming home on your 18th birthday and your stuff is packed on the front porch and your foster parent is saying, hey, it's been great, have a nice life. Some are working tirelessly to combat a substance abuse addiction that they use to mask the pain and the trauma that they've experienced. Some have mental or physical wounds so deep that they will need and they continue to need constant care. Most of our kids are victims of assault, human trafficking, prostitution, and many other crimes. Almost all have had to endure freezing, colds, or blazing heat and blisters on their feet as they walk around Denver because there's an ordinance that prevents them from sleeping on the streets. These are the youth of Denver who are experiencing homelessness. This was not a choice that they made. It was a choice that was made for them. I recently, well, actually not so recently anymore, um, there was a young man that I met when I was pretty new to Urban Peak who had come home, and there was a sign on the door that said, we can't live here anymore. Good luck. Hope you have a good life. And there was nothing left in the apartment. No conversation before that, no heads up, nothing. He had a backpack, two pairs of jeans, a phone, $200, and that was it. So he desperately called his aunt and uncle and said, I came home, my mom's gone, have you heard from her, what's going on? And they said, we haven't, we, don't, we, we have no idea what's going on. We don't have much, but we can give you a roof over your head if you can make it out to Oregon. So he got on a bus and he was heading west, and he stopped in Denver, fell asleep in the bus station because he had a layover, and someone stole his backpack. So now he has nothing. He's desperate. Luckily, our partners at the bus station know about Urban Peak and said, hey, at least there's a safe place to go. Go visit them. They can help you get a new ID. They can help you maybe get a bus ticket um, to reach your family. So we got to Urban Peak and spent some time there just getting to know people. And he, he clearly felt safe because he would come every day for breakfast and to take showers and to hang out. But one day I noticed he was outside again. And I walked over and I said, you know, so what are you going to do today? What are you going to do today that's going to be productive, that's going to be a baby step towards changing your life? And he got really intense. I almost thought he was going to hit me. Like, he was just so angry. Um, and he looked at me, and he said, what do you care? I, I think he threw in some other words that I won't share. Um, and I looked at him, and I said, I really do care, because I know that this wasn't what your life was meant to be, and I know that you have more to contribute than this. And he sort of backed down and softened up a little bit, and he said, you know what? No one has ever told me that they've cared about me. And right after that, he was up in the GED classroom working on his GED and working on job readiness and 
changing his life because one person stopped for two minutes to say, I really care about you. That's what Urban Peak's about. We have kids that come in the door, 17 years old. I said, hey, I haven't seen you around before. What, you know, what's your story? How can we help you? What's going on? How did you end up here? And she said, I had a choice to make. I could be sold into a sex prostitution ring by my mother so she could buy more drugs, or I could run away and try and make it on the streets, but I'm really scared because I don't know how to make that happen. I can't imagine a 17-year-old. I can't imagine myself at 17 having to make that kind of choice, let alone having to then care for myself and put those pieces together. But Urban Peak was there for her. And that's the face of Urban Peak. Those are the youth that come in our door. They're desperate. They don't have a place to go. They have no one in their lives that cares for them. So why should Urban Peak be on your hearts today? Because these young people need every single one of us. And the, the amount of collections of belongings and gift cards and all of these things that we can go and give back to these youth tonight are a perfect example of how you make a difference. Every one of these young people needs us. Everyone in our community needs to get behind them so that they have the power, along with the support, to change their lives and the lives be ones that they choose instead of the traumatic ones that were chosen for them. These youth are the future of our city, either future leaders and success stories or the future chronically homeless and helpless that live on our streets. We in this room, we in our community, have the collective power to change this outcome. So I invite you to join us, like you did tonight. But if this touches your heart, there are so many more ways that we can get you engaged in changing this crisis in our community. Our website is a great resource to find out some of those ways, urbanpeak.org. You can go to the volunteer tab and find out about all of the different ways that you can volunteer and support youth in a real hands-on manner. But of course, as always, donations are welcome and we always need your support. And even tonight, if that's something that touches your heart, our staff can take credit cards, checks, whatever it takes for you to give back a little bit more because just know it makes a difference and it changes a life.